before beginning this video, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to check out the original video on House Robber 1 first. Because this problem is heavily based on the same concept. The only difference is that this time the houses are arranged in a circular fashion. So I will be using the exact same concept of the original problem House Robber 1 and extend its solution. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see how this problem can be broken down into the original problem house robber 1 and then we can find an optimal solution with a very minimum change. And then as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. Once again, you are given an array that determines the money stored in each house, right? And you have to rob the maximum amount of money, given the condition that no two houses can be adjacent to each other. However, there is a certain twist in this problem. The only twist is that the last time all the houses were in a kind of a row, right? But this time, all of these houses are arranged in a circular fashion. So what does that mean? If I'm given an array like this, this is determining, okay, these are the houses with the money stashed. The problem means that these houses are arranged in a circular fashion. So it simply means that if you're choosing house one, then you cannot choose these two houses, right? In this particular test case, you can achieve the maximum loot by robbing the house in money one and the house in money three, right? So in this test case, four will be your answer, right? We could not see the effect of a circular pattern in this particular test case, right? But let us look at our test case number two. This time, when I try to look at the houses, they are arranged like nine, one, two, and nine, right? So if this had been a previous problem, you could have achieved the maximum loot by selecting 9 and then a 9 again, since they are not adjacent to each other. But in this problem statement, since they are arranged in a circular manner, you can see that both of these 9s come adjacent to each other. So if you choose this one, then you cannot choose any of these 9s, correct? So for this particular test case, you can achieve a maximum loot when you rob the house with money 9 and this house with money 2. So 11 will be your answer in this case. Now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us try to break down this problem. Okay, so I have a sample array in front of me that is determining the money stashed in each house. So all of these values are representing what is the money stashed and at the bottom, you can see the index of each house, right? First of all, let us try to visualize even better. What does this problem actually mean? So when you try to visualize all of these houses in a circular fashion, they end up looking like this. So it means that you can start robbing this house and then you cannot rob any of these two houses, right? So you can try to go in any direction. You can go from left to right in a clockwise direction or you can go from right to left, right? Both of the methods are perfectly correct. As you already know, it is no use to try to solve this problem with a brute force approach or with a greedy approach. Both of them are not divided. So you might be wondering, what did we achieve by arranging these houses in a circular fashion? Let me show you a neat little trick, which is just hidden inside this problem. When you look at this visual representation, you will realize a very important thing. Let us say this is my first house that is at index zero. And this is the last house, right? that is at index seven. So there can be two scenarios. Either you choose to rob the first house and then you will not be able to rob the last house, correct? Or if you choose to rob the last house, then you cannot rob the first house, right? Because they will become adjacent to each other. So what I can do is I can try to break down this problem into two steps. In the first step, what I will do is I will skip the last house and I will go in a clockwise direction, right? So when I skip the last house, then I get my array like this. 
and all the houses are now once again arranged in a row correct however there is one other way you can go about robbing these houses you can start from the last house and then go all the way to the second house right and this will be in a reverse direction this time you will be leaving out the first house so this way you can form another array in which you are skipping the first house so these are the only two ways which we can rob correct either you skip the last house or you skip the first house there is no other way right and you have to maximize your loot correct so once again what i'm just going to do is i will determine the maximum loot i can have by skipping the last house and i will determine the maximum loot i can have by skipping the first house these are the two possibilities i have correct now just choose the maximum loot you can achieve from any of these two cases so your final answer would be the maximum of both of these values right so that is what makes this problem so so easy your total loot will be the maximum of both of these conditions when you're skipping the last house and when you're skipping the first house just evaluate both of them and the maximum of these values will be your answer let us quickly do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how this is actually working in action on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and on the right once again i have my sample array right oh and by the way this complete code and its test cases are also available on my github profile you can find the link in the description below moving on with a dry run first of all we start off with the base case if the array length is less than 2 just return whatever is the maximum value and if you only have one house that will be your maximum loot correct now what you want to do is you want to create two new arrays so first array will determine if you are skipping the last house and the second array will determine if you are skipping the first house now we have to populate both of these arrays right so i start a for loop that goes from the beginning all the way up to the end and the way i populate them is for the last house i will just take in the original value that is 2 and for the condition when i'm skipping the first house i will add the value at i plus 1 so in this array 7 will be added so when this for loop ultimately completes both of my arrays will be populated like this so you can see that in the skip last array i have skipped out the last house 8 and in the skip first array i have skip the first house that is 2 so now you have got two individual problems the next step is very very simple what you're going to do is you will look at robbing the both the possibilities and to rob them you will take help of the exact same code that is for house robber 1 correct once you get the values you will get two values one is a x and one is y and then your answer would be the maximum of both of these values and that is returned in this last step since this solution is based a lot on the original problem house robber 1 the time complexity of this solution will also be order of n and the space complexity will also be order of n i hope i was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you as per my final thoughts i just want to say that whenever you are solving problems on leet code I have often seen that there are some problems which are divided into three segments part 1 part 2 part 3 part 4 and so on right and usually what they will do is make some modifications to part 1 make it a little tougher and then it brings you to part 2 same for part 3 part 4 and so on right so what i have seen is if you're writing an efficient solution to part 1 then usually just with a little modification you can often find a solution to part 2 So whenever you are solving problems like this just try to make sure that you are understanding the part 1 first and try to build your solution on top of it rather than reengineering the entire problem and coming up with a totally new solution Did you see any other problems on lead code where you saw such a pattern Did you face any problems while following this video Can you try to solve the next problem house robber 3 on your own Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. In a short while, I will be also uploading the solution to house robber 3.
Until then, stay tuned.